Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today, one of the questions that comes up fairly regularly, for me at least, is what can I paint with contrast? And the short answer is, well, anything you want. <laughs> paint is paint is paint. But because a lot of these shades aren't really 100% uh, matched to historical stuff, you know, the question of, I guess people are almost asking, am I allowed to use contrast on, you know, certain things? And well, of course you are, you know. <laughs> Uh, this is a very quick method, and it's mostly historically accurate, but we do have to take a couple of liberties with the fact that Citadel isn't really out there making stuff for our GIs. Uh, luckily, if you take a look at the Cadians, you know, the color scheme is pretty reminiscent of a certain period in history, so we can get pretty close using the contrast method. So I'm going to list all of the paints in the description below. Without any further mucking around, let's get started. So to begin with, I've given this fella a spray of Wraith Bone. You could work from white for this, but I think you're going to get a slightly better result if you do use that slight warmth. There's a little bit of peachiness in the Wraith Bone, which is going to help with some of the colors that we're going to use. Ironically, what we're going to start with first of all, though, is a dry brush, and we're going to use Rack White. Now I'm using this because this has got a, a slight kind of peachiness to it when compared to something like Praxetti White. And what you're looking to do, same as always, is we're just going to go over the whole model and really pay attention to the high points. So, for example, along his fingers here, along the back of his coat, you know, all this detail on these sleeves. I really love these uh, Warlord plastic kits, say eh? These new Americans, some really nice models. Uh, this will, <laughs> you will not notice this show up terribly well on camera, but... I'm going to dry brush the whole model in rack white, and we'll come back and get a look at that. Now, that doesn't look like much on camera, but I swear <laughs> there is actually a little bit of a difference. The most important thing with that dry brush is not so much the change in color, but what we actually want to do is to break up the smoothness of the primer, which sounds counterproductive, but I promise, instead of having a very smooth finish, what we want is a slight kind of bittiness. Uh, you'll see what I mean once this dries. I'm going to start off though, I've got my, this is my red grass uh, size 2 brush. I love this thing, hey, it's so good for applying contrast. Real nice size and it keeps a good point. I've got skeleton horde and we're just going to go over all of his jacket. Surprise, surprise. When you come near uh, like areas where his webbing is going to be, take your time and just try and avoid it, but don't worry too much if you do get some of that on there. Now let's go around and fill all of this in. So once you've covered over all of his uniform and his gaiters, that's what you'll get. Now I had a bit of a brainwave, and I decided I was going to go over all of his webbing in the same color too. So once that's dried thoroughly, I've got here Plague Bearer Flesh. Now webbing like this, especially, you know, we're going to give this that fella green trousers, so we're looking at probably late war. Uh, it would have been that they were issued with a slightly greenish... Uh, webbing material, which would fade towards, you know, just off white. But we do want it to look a little different from his jacket. So what we'll do is just a little bit of Plague Bearer Flesh, just to change up the color. You'll notice it doesn't look like much going on, but once this dries, this is going to make quite a difference. And it's a lot easier than trying to avoid <laughs> putting anything on the, uh, the webbing as you're doing the jacket color. Now, as you can see, that's not quite dry, but what that's giving us is a green tone, which is not quite as lurid as if we used just straight Plague Bearer flesh. So that's why I've gone and put it over the skeleton bone. Skeleton bone. What's a blown? Anyway, <laughs> I've got here Gilliman flesh. And I've switched on down to a smaller brush for this because we're going to need a bit more control here. No prizes for guessing where this goes. Now, going back to my size 2 brush for this, I've got Militarum Green. This one is one you're going to need to shake up pretty decently before you apply it. But just fairly generously onto his trousers. Now while that's drying, we can get on down and go to his boots. I've got here Wildwood, and this is a nice dark brown leather sort of color. 
And I'm just going to cover over his whole boot. When we get to these straps that are holding his gaiters on, just paint them in anyway. Uh, when we base him, put a little bit of sort of static grass around his feet, you won't notice that those haven't been, I guess, painted correctly. But however you want to do it. Now we're going to go up to his helmet, and I've got Gore Grunter Fur. Uh, this is a nice sort of red leather look. Um, I'm using this because I've got it, and I do like the look of it. Uh, what I'd suggest is if you want to save a couple of pennies, or you don't want to buy just a whole pot for this little bit, uh, maybe some weapon straps, you can use wild wood instead. It won't look that different. Now I've got snake bite leather. And we're just going to fill in all of the wooden details. So his rifle in this case, I'm going to suggest just go over the black bits as well. Uh, it won't matter too much, we're going to paint those in a second anyway. And don't forget if he's got an entrenching tool or something attached to his belt. Now we're getting into the home stretch. What we're going to do is his helmet, and for this I'm actually going to use a normal paint. This is Camo Olive Dark Green? Camo Olive Green? <laughs> from Vallejo. Uh, I'm using this instead of contrast because it's going to give us a flatter finish, and I think that's important for these really sort of, you know, hard metallic areas. Uh, what I'd suggest, if you want to stick to Citadel colors for this, you could use Castellan Green. Uh, otherwise, if you do want to use contrast, Creed Camo is sort of a good, you know, I guess, compromise for this look. But I would suggest once you've put one coat of Creed Camo on, you're going to need to come back give it a second afterwards. Oops, and I've forgotten a little bit of uh, leather strap back there. Oh well, I'll touch that up now. And then for the same reason, we're going to go on down to a small layer brush, and we'll go ahead and fill in all of those areas with black. And I'm using regular black paint instead of black Templar, because that coverage and kind of that solidity is what I'm looking for in the color here. Now I think at this stage you could quite happily base them up and put them on the table. You know, a whole army looking like that would not be too bad, I don't think. And it's relatively quick and really very simple to do. What I suggest though is that there are just a couple of very simple extra steps which will help push this a little bit further. So my friend and yours, Agrax Earthshade, <laughs> uh, sometimes I suggest using this as a pre-shade for contrast, but in this case I want to put it on as nearly a final step because we want to use it to sort of mat down some of these colors without making them look quite so lurid. So start from the top, and we'll just Agrax Earthshade the whole miniature. Uh, you don't need to go crazy with this, just enough to get a thin layer of it. Make sure you are still getting it into your recesses like normal, and then give that plenty of time to dry. Now you can see what a difference that makes. Tone down a lot of those colors and sort of brings them all together. That green for the webbing is probably the one bit that stands out as, I guess, the most inaccurate, but it works pretty well for what we've done. What I'm going to do now, though, I've got a little bit of Iron Warriors, uh, but any sort of dark gunmetal color will do. All we'll do is just a couple of wee slashes of this here and there, just to touch up that gunmetal like that. Now from here you could apply a little bit of Kislev flesh and highlighter skin, but I genuinely do not think you'll need to. Uh, that looks pretty bleeding good how it is. What I'll do now is just pop a quick base on him and see how he looks like in context with his environment. And there we have it. With his base finished, our GI is complete. Now like I said, this isn't, you know, 100% historically accurate, but it's pretty close. And honestly, if you've got limited hobby time, like say you've got kids or, you know, a full-time job or something that which leaves you with not much time, that's a pretty decent result for about 15 minutes a figure. So I reckon if you painted up a whole army looking like that, you're going to be onto a winner. That doesn't look too bad to me at all. Now, if you do want to pick up your own US Army stuff, or indeed anything from Warlord Games, Feel free to click on the affiliate link in the description below. It nets me a small commission off the top and helps the channel out. Doesn't cost you anything extra. As well, thanks to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of the patrons who've helped make this possible, including producers Jonathan Harris, Alan Nuttall, and Ben Hicks. So thank you very much, guys. As always, any questions, feel free to drop in the old comment box below. 
my Twitter and Facebook are both linked there too. So thank you all very much for your time and you enjoy the rest of your day.